Hello, I'm Professor Pan, and today I will be talking about gene count normalization and single cell imaging based spatially resolved transcriptomics. Advances in single cell technologies have enabled scientists to take individual single cells and profile their transcriptomes, that is, measure what genes are being expressed, to facilitate the discovery and characterization of transcriptionally distinct groups of cells, which may represent distinct cell types and cell states. Normalization of such gene expression data is generally needed to account for technical factors that may confound underlying biological signals. For example, consider if we, in our temporary magical omnipotence, uh, know there to be two cell types, cell type 1 and cell type 2, and we know these cell types are quite similar in their expression of group X genes. Uh, these are maybe housekeeping genes, for example. Uh, but they're very different in their expression of group Y and group C genes. Uh, these may be genes that confer cell type specific functions. And there are also other genes that are not expressed in either cell type, so we don't show here. Now, consider we measure this gene expression in lots of cells, three of which are shown here, two of which cells A and B are cell type 1, and one cell, cell C, is cell type 2. However, for technical reasons related to, say, sequencing depth, all the genes in cell B are detected at a lower level than in cell A and cell C. If we perform differential expression analysis or full change analysis to look for genes with a high full change between these three cells uh, using such unnormalized gene expression, we may erroneously conclude that the group X genes are different between cell B and the other two cells. Further, we may conclude that group Y genes are different between cell A and cell B, even though they're the same cell type. In order to correct for such technical variation, we can apply normalization methods. Normalization methods for single cell RNA sequencing data often rely on the total number of genes detected. One type of normalization method is called library size normalization, also sometimes called size factor normalization, uh, relative counts normalization, counts per million normalization, and so forth. But generally, in library size normalization, we take the observed gene expression and divide it by the total number of genes detected in each cell, also known as slightly sense. If we compute the library size for each gene in our hypothetical example, it becomes clear that cell B just has a smaller library size compared to the other two cells. So again, if we perform library size normalization by dividing every gene by this total number of genes detected, we can also multiply by a constant scaling factor like a million to convert our observed gene expression counts to normalized gene expression magnitudes uh, that we might achieve if we had, for example, sequenced each cell to the same uh, library size of a million. Now, given these uh, counts per million library size normalized gene expression values, we're able to, again, evaluate our differential expression. And in this case, derive the correct differential expression results where group X genes are not differentially expressed between any of our cells, and group Y and group Z genes are indeed differentially expressed between cells of cell type 1 and cell type 2, and not within cells of cell type 1, uh, as we saw previously. It's important to keep in mind that different normalization methods work well because the data that's being applied to satisfies certain underlying assumptions. For library size normalization, we're inherently assuming that even though individual single cells may differ a little bit in the specific genes that's being expressed, the total number of genes detected in each single cell is roughly similar. For full transcriptome profiling by sequencing, this is actually a very reasonable assumption. However, as we'll see for other types of single cell resolution transcriptome profiling technologies, this assumption can actually be violated. More recently, imaging-based spatially resolved transcriptomic technologies are enabling scientists to profile hundreds of targeted gene species within individual single cells while preserving their spatial organization within tissues. As with single cell sequencing technologies, imaging-based spatially resolved transcriptomics technologies allow us to measure what genes are being expressed in individual single cells, while also now keeping track of the spatial positions of these cells to facilitate spatially informed analyses. As both single cell RNA sequencing and imaging-based spatially resolved transcriptomics profile gene expression in individual single cells, 
One may be tempted to apply methods, including normalization methods previously developed for single mm -hmm. RNA sequencing, directly to imaging based spatially resolved transcriptomics data. Indeed, both technologies provide us with single cell resolution gene expression profiling measurements. But it's important to keep in mind that they currently differ in the number of unique gene species they can simultaneously profile. While single cell RNA sequencing enables full transcriptome profiling, imaging based spatially resolved transcriptomics currently enables profiling of hundreds to thousands of gene species via targeted gene panels. Furthermore, these targeted gene panels need to be designed, and scientists need to choose what genes to include in these targeted gene panels. So therefore, scientists may design a gene panel to specifically choose genes that they believe are enriched in a particular cell type or cell state uh, or relevant to a specific biological process that's more relevant to one cell type than another, rendering the genes in the gene set to be a non-representative subset of the transcriptome, also what we'll herein refer to as skewed. In our recent paper, we sought to investigate the impact of different normalization methods, including library size normalization, when applied to different targeted gene panels in the analysis and interpretation of imaging-based spatially resolved transcriptomics data. We demonstrate that gene count-based normalizations, including library size normalization, when applied to targeted gene panels that are skewed, uh, may reduce the reliability of downstream analyses, including differential expression analysis, full change analysis, spatial variable gene expression analysis, uh, and introduce false positives and false negative results when compared to results obtained from gene panels that are more representative of the whole process. You can find a link to the open access paper in the video description. Feel free to check it out for more details. But briefly, we use real imaging-based spatially resolved transcriptomic data sets to simulate different 100 gene targeted gene panels, some of which are skewed to overrepresent genes expressed in a specific tissue region or cell type. Given these data sets with different gene panels, we apply various normalization methods and perform various downstream analysis, such as differential expression, gene full change, spatially variable gene analysis, and then compare these results to what we found when we performed the analysis using the full, more representative gene panel. As one example, consider the cisgen MRFish imaging based spatially resolved transcriptome data set. Here, each row is a gene, and each column is a region in the tissue that we derive from registering this data set to the Allen Brain Atlas Common Coordinate Framework using our tool SP Align. And some of these genes, as you can see, are more highly expressed in some regions, uh, but overall, in this full gene panel, we have a good representation of all the regions. So, what we did was subset this data to create simulated imaging based spatially resolved transcriptomic data sets with different 100 gene targeted gene panels, some of which were skewed to overrepresent genes that were expressed in a specific tissue region, such as the ventricles, the venula, fiber tracts, and so forth, uh, as well as non skewed gene panels. And again, we might be interested in designing these skewed gene panels because we're particularly interested in characterizing the cell type transcriptional heterogeneity within a particular tissue region, for example. And again, we apply various normalization methods, including library size normalization, and perform various downstream analyses, such as differential expression analysis, gene full change, spatially variable genes, and compare these results to what we would expect to find in the additional full data set. Notably, when using gene count-based normalizations, including library size normalization shown here, the normalized gene expression magnitudes with the full versus the skewed gene panels differ systematically for cells in a region-specific manner, as you would expect. Consider these two genes as examples. Each point here is a cell. The x-axis is the library size normalized gene expression magnitude with the full gene panel. And the y-axis is the library size normalized gene expression magnitude with the ventricle skewed gene panel. And cells within the ventricles are shown in purple. So again, you can appreciate how the expression magnitude of these genes, depending on whether you use the full or the skewed gene panel, differs particularly in a region-specific manner. Such region-skewed normalized gene expression magnitudes then impacts the interpretation of downstream differential expression uh, and gene full change evaluations. Here, each point is a gene, 
And purple indicates the differential expression analysis results from a ventricle versus all other cell tests. And the gray indicates a differential expression analysis result between other regions versus all other cells tests. So if we look at the negative log 10p values in a region-specific differential expression analysis, so again, we're doing differential expression analysis to find, let's say, genes that are upregulated in a particular region compared to others, LRG4 is considered non-significant in the library size normalization full gene panel analysis, but it is significant in a library size normalized skew gene panel analysis. We get different results depending on whether we use one gene panel or not. And likewise, we can focus on full change. Uh, in this case, we can see HDRC2 has a negative log 2 full change in the library size normalized full gene panel analysis, uh, but a negative log 2 full change in the library normal size skewed gene panel analysis. So, depending on which gene panel you use, the gene can be considered having a positive full change or a negative full change in a particular tissue region relative to all of this. We apply this to many different imaging-based spatially resolved transcriptomics data sets, representing many different technologies, representing many different tissues. To summarize all of these results, uh, we can quantify these differential expression positives and false negatives, as well as these full change switch rates across a variety of normalization methods, gene panels, tissues, technologies, and so forth, to show that uh, this impact of normalization for region skewed uh, gene panels is consistent across gene panels for imaging based spatially resolved transcriptomics data sets representing multiple technologies, multiple tissues, with error rates impacting as many as 30 to 60 percent of the genes evaluated. It's worth noting that non-skewed gene panels do not exhibit this type of uh, false error rate in terms of false differential expression and uh, full change switches. And likewise, normalization methods that don't consider the total number of genes detected, such as cell volume normalization, aren't impacted by these skewed gene panels. Recall this is all very expected because library size normalization assumes that all cells have similar total gene expression, which is violated when gene panels overrepresent genes expressed in a specific cell type or specific tissue region, which tends to be enriched in a specific cell type. Consider again in our temporary magical omnipotence, we know there to be two cell types that are quite similar in their expression group X genes. Again, these are maybe housekeeping genes, uh, but again, they're very different in their expression of group Y and group C genes that may confer cell specific functions. But instead of profiling roughly equal amounts of group Y and group C genes as we did previously, and as we might expect in more full transcriptome analysis, uh, in this case, we design a targeted gene panel that is skewed to primarily focus on genes relevant for subtype 1. That is, we have more genes that are in the group Y genes. Now consider we again measure the gene expression for this targeted gene panel for three cells, two of which are cell type 1, cells A and B, and one of which is cell type 2, cell C. And again, for technical reasons, let's say related to imaging volume, all the genes detected are at a lower level in cell B. If we again calculate the library size for each cell and perform library size normalization, and use the resulting library size normalized gene expression for differential expression analysis. I would erroneously interpret group X genes as being differentially expressed with a negative log to full change in cell type 1 versus cell type 2. Because again, the assumption that all cells have similar total gene expression is violated as our gene panel overrepresents genes uh, that are expressed uh, in cell type 1. In our paper, we further demonstrate using a simulation framework using single cell RNA seq data, for which we restrict analysis to select genes as if we had a targeted gene panel, that the extent of these library size normalization induced errors unexpectedly varies depending on the size of the targeted gene panel. As we see, these differences generally tend to be greater for smaller skewed gene panels compared to larger skewed gene panels as these larger panels tend to be better approximations of a full transcriptome characterization anyway. 
As such, we speculate that as imaging-based spatially resolved transcriptomic technologies continue to improve and expand on the number of genes that can be simultaneously profiled, that the extent of these library size normalization uh, induced errors will generally decrease. However, it will still be important to characterize other potential cell type specific segmentation errors or cell size specific decoding errors uh, or other technical limitations that may ultimately compound biological interpretation. So, in conclusion, I hope I've demonstrated to you how the specific normalization method, in conjunction with the chain panel design for an imaging based spatially resolved transcriptomic experiment, uh, can impact the downstream transcriptional analyses in such a way to impact the biological interpretation of your results. As investigators move beyond using imaging based spatially resolved transcriptomic technologies to profile the spatial organization of cell types within tissue, to more hypothesis-driven, disease-specific characterizations of specific cell types and specific uh, disease tissue contexts, uh, we generally anticipate the use of more targeted and skewed gene panels will be needed. In these kinds of settings, as we've shown, it'll be important to choose a normalization method or at least interpret your results given the particular gene panel design and the various characteristics regarding its cell type specific skew, or at least interpret the results considering the limitations of these normalization induced effects with respect to your downstream analyses. And in general, we emphasize to students the importance of understanding computational methods, be they normalization methods or otherwise, in terms of how they work and why they work in the context that they're generally applied. And that way, when new technologies and data modalities inevitably arise, you'll be well prepared to critically evaluate the applicability of these methods to this new data and ultimately interpret your results in the context of these methods given their assumptions and limitations.